Hey, it's Paul from HowToPlayBass.com. Today's lesson is the first part of a two-parter looking at the bass line to Suspicious Minds by Elvis, the original studio version from the Memphis album. Um, this lesson is going to be taught by a colleague of mine, Gordon Clayton. You're going to see lots more videos from Gordon over the coming months, um, so it's something I'm really excited about. Um, it's a fairly straightforward song, um, isn't too difficult, so you should be able to get your fingers around it um, and play through the different sections of the song. Uh, before Gordon gets started, if you're not already a subscriber to my free monthly using click the link that's underneath the video head over to my website and subscribe to my email list as a thank you for doing that you'll get a series of song tutorials video and PDF format coming to you over the next few days additionally there's a free song tutorial every month again that's in video and PDF format all that material is exclusive to people who subscribe all it takes is your email address so click that link head over and do that and come back here and let's join Gordon and get started with suspicious minds This is a video tutorial for um, the bass line to Suspicious Minds by Elvis. It's, um, it was in First Bass and Beyond issue 207, the notations in that issue. Um, I'm just going to jump straight in, we're going to do the intro and the first verse together. Um, it's a straightforward rhythm. I'm going to play this um, G note at fret 5 on my D string and I'm going to use my little finger here. Um, to play this note, and I'll play the rhythm of the first bar. So if I count that in as well, now you'll hear um, that I'm just going to play one, two, three, four. So you're actually playing the note, first note's one and a half beats and then the second note is half a beat and then that repeats. So it's one and two and three and four and... And that's exactly the same in the second bar, but we just played this note here, which is a D, um, on the last and. So one and two and three and four and... If you get that rhythm down, it's really good because it's what is, is used in all the bars of the first verse except the last one, where it leads into the second verse. So and I'm going to play through all of that in a second. So I'm going to play the two bars of the intro together now. One, two, three, four. That's the intro, just two bars and then the vocal comes in. We go back to um, G for the vocal, so it, stays, it sticks on the G. Um, and we play exactly the same two bars that we've just done, but this time with the vocal over. So I'll play that one more time. This is now that the vocals come in. And I'm using fingers three and four there, just because I'd like the the, the way I can get on the tip on and, and for what's coming up later because I'm going to go to a C next which is the next bar uh, but some people might use one and two or just finger one and roll it and jump back so um, look at the think of the fingerings that um, suit yourself best um, the third and fourth bars are just a C note with exactly the same rhythm I'm going to take that with my first finger So the first four bars I'm going to play for you now, first two are G, and the second two are C. Fifth bar is D, root note only, exactly the same rhythm at fret five on your A string. Bar of C is fret 6, with exactly the same rhythm and just root notes. 
the last two bars are a bar of G with the same rhythm and hitting the lower fifth, which is a D note on um, the hand of beat four, which we've done previously. And then this is the only bar that has um, a rhythmic difference to the to the rest in, in the first verse, and it's because it's going to lead into the second. We just got a, a slightly busy um, little fill at um, on the fourth beat, which I'll play for you now. We play the same for the first two beats as we've done on every other bar, and then we play a quarter note. So it's one and two and three, and then there's two six. Um, hammer-ons from fret 3, which is a C, to fret 5, which is a D, and that happens twice. So I'll play that now, and we, we get into hammer-ons, try and make sure you've got plenty of strength in the fingers that you're throwing down. Just play the first one and then chuck it on. Um, so I'll play you those last two bars together. all the way through the first verse quite slowly from including the intro so you'll have two bars of intro and then eight bars of the verse start that again just on this one make sure you get it nice and near the fret when you're playing it first verse. This is the second verse of Suspicious Minds. It just gets slightly busier than the first. You're using the same notes. I'm going to use the same fingerings as I did in the um, first verse. Um, you're just getting a slightly busier, a bit more eighth notes coming in. I'll explain the rhythm as we're going along, but I'm using the same fingering and it's the same chords. So we're going to start on the G and is this, I'll play the first bar. Again, we're just using the G at fret five on the D string and then the lower fifth of that chord, which is a D here at fret five on my A string. So it's basically just bouncing between those two notes and that, that continues on the other chords as well. So the first um, bar just using the um, G and D notes is your first bar. The second bar gets slightly busier on the end. So it's just bouncing between those two notes. I'll play the two bars together on G now. So you can see that you're just using two notes there and I'm just bouncing between the G and the D note. I then go to C and where we played C just as a root note all the way through in the first verse. We're now going to do exactly what we do on the G and bring in this lower fifth, which is the lower fifth of C is the G note at fret three on your E string. You're playing fret three on your A string for the C note and fret three on your E string for the G note. And the rhythm is the same. Um, just rolling my first finger on those. You know, I tend to find that if I'm playing across two strings, um, I'll use my first finger to roll, and sometimes my second, and if I use my the other one, if I want a separate string thing like here, I'll use three and four. So those two bars for C, first bar is just the root and the fifth, like we said. 
The next bar has a little walk back to go to the D, so we're gonna play the same on the first two beats. And then the last two beats is constant eighth notes, so it's like three and four, and then he plays the C, goes to the fifth again, the G, which is the lower fifth, and then he plays the C, and then a C sharp, because you're just gonna, it's just a nice chromatic note leading to the D, which we're going to play next. So I'll play those two bars together. And then we're gonna play the next bar, which is a D. Um, I play this um, song in, in two function bands that I play in, and I, I play it quite differently to how it's tapped out in the, um, First Base and Beyond magazine. I've tried to stick to it for people who are looking at the tabs, but the one thing I do here uh, when it moves to the D is the tab is showing that we play um, the D and then it's fret five on the, with D's at fret five on your A string and then it's this same lower fifth. So that's where, how it's written in the tab. I take all the A's that you'll see in, in here. Um, as open strings because I just find it easier. So that's, I, I, I play quite a bit of it differently, but that's the bit that I'm, I'm actually sticking to playing differently. As Paul always states in the um, easing for the um, whatever songs being um, transcribed, you can always arrive at your own fingerings. So you've got two options here. You can see that in the tab it's at fret five, but I'm actually playing in open A and that will be throughout. I will point it out as we're going through so you can see where I deviate from the, the tab. Um, so when it goes to the D, it's the same rhythm, so I play. So you play two Ds, and then on the end, so that's one and two, and on the end of beat two, you know, I hit an open A, and then it's just those two notes alternating. So I'll play that bar nice and slow. It then goes back to the C. And you play the same bar as you did in bar four. Because now it's going to get busy leading into the chorus, which is, I'll play the, those two bars together where it moves up to the D and the C leading back down, so. Now what you've got is um, a bar of eighths, the first two beats on D, and the second two beats on C. So it's one and two and three and four and then you're gonna play the first two beats on B in the next bar using eighth notes. And then there's like a rapid hammer on here just to, to the to the quarter note plays that twice on beats three and four. So the last two bars of the tune leading into the chorus are I'm now going to play the entire second verse through nice and slowly so you can see what's going on. the second verse.